Oh my God, Becky. Will you look at her butt? Hey there, comic friends. I'm Travis. It's time for another edition of Monster Comic Reviews, where I talk about lots of superhero comics. This is for the week of... Oh, he's so unprofessional. He forgot to look this time. Um... I never know what date is. October 15, 2014. Let's talk some comic books. Right off the bat, let's talk Baternal. Baternal. Ah, ah, ah. Batman Eternal issue number 28. Not quite a broke back cover. Close, but not quite. Um, anyway, what can we say about this issue? Um, So, the important things in here is we get the final breaking of Catwoman for her to decide, look, I can't go on just ignoring this war that's going on in Gotham. I have to do something about it. I'm going to take on my family's mantle, you know, the, the family mantle, take on the name, the family name that's been kind of hinted to and kind of told to us um, in other issues of, of Batman Eternal. Uh, that's going to move Catwoman to where the Catwoman book's going to be. In next week's books, uh, Catwoman comes out, Catwoman issue number 35. Uh, we get the new look of Catwoman as far as her trying to be a crime boss to control the city and control the streets of Gotham so there's not so much chaos, there's not so much random death uh, amongst the people that she seems to care for, the street people, that sort of thing. So that's the significant thing that happens in this book. It's done somewhat okay um you know a child ends up dying in it and that's the final impetus that gets it that way you have a brief moment with batman of batman kind of saying oh i'm, I'm here for you and her saying no i'm alone you're not here for me um so there's that part um uh, you know we killer croc has been kind of a cool character up to this point we see him break here also um so i don't know how much more killer croc we're going to see from this point forward which I think is unfortunate. I was kind of hoping that he would continue to be kind of the quasi good guy in the thing. The odd, really odd thing that happens in this book is there's this whole kind of thing going on with, um, you know, Red Hood showing up to kind of talk Batgirl down for doing anything too stupid. You know, kind of supposedly proving the point that the Batgirl is really the better Robin of all of the Robins that were Robins. And, um, and, and then at the end of it, it's like she kind of, she kind of hits on him. I mean, she kind of like, you know, you don't have to go, you know, kind of implies that maybe they could attempt to be a couple or have a relationship and whatnot. And, um, and um, you know, Jason Todd Red Hood gives her the, you know, I've, I've always been a poor excuse. I, I've never been able to be Dick. You know, I've never been able to be, you know, Grayson. Um, that was just weird. <laughs> really weird uh, to me. I just can't envision. They, they didn't give us anything that would give us the mindset that would imply that um, Batgirl would be that kind of needy that um, that that she'd potentially want to get hooked up with um, with with Jason Todd, who actually does have some good qualities, despite you know some people not liking him, some people think he's great. He does have some decent qualities as a human being, and did have some decent qualities as a human being. Um, but still, that just to me that's weird. Um, Really weird. So, uh, I don't know. That was that was some strange stuff. That that really threw me off. That had me reading, going, "What?" You know, um, it just seemed weird. So, um, yeah, um, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on in Batman Eternal right now. As far as I think we're gonna swing back into the whole um, Arkham Asylum uh, part of the story in the next issues. I'm interested in that. Um, I don't know. We'll see where the thing goes. I, I'm, I'm always curious to read it. I always kind of enjoy reading it, regardless of how weird it is sometimes. Um, just to see them try to maintain this weekly book and storyline and where is it all going to lead out to at the other end. Um, and I'm really curious to know if the impact it's going to have on Gotham is already going to be shown to us in all of these other books before it gets to, before it gets to these... Um, you know, before it gets to these, um, in the, in the actual Batman Eternal, Eternal book, which is going to be totally screwed up, which will be a whole another rant I'll be talking about, I'm sure. 
Anyway, um, Batman and Robin issue number 35. I got the, um, I got the monster cover. Um, I like it. I almost wish I'd gotten the regular cover though. Uh, but any rate, um, wonderful, wonderful, uh, book, amazing, um, artwork, um, you know, uh, this is one of those issues where Patrick Gleason is firing on all cylinders, um, and, and the inker, um, uh, gray and a colorist, um, Klaus, uh, I mean, just in incredibly, incredible art as far as it goes. I think the story is cool too. You got Batman stealthing into um, Acropolis. Still saves people. You know, still does Batman despite the fact that he really has this mission and he needs to stay on a tight schedule and not get himself in trouble, but he still does some work in there. There's some fun moments in here where the rest of the Bat family, you know, shows back at the Bat Cave and basically goes, look, we're going to go and help Batman. We're not staying in Gotham. They go and find Batwoman and tell her she's alone. Gotham's all yours to protect the whole damn thing. So great lines in there with Batwoman. This is the Batwoman we should be seeing everywhere, in my opinion. Um, some cool stuff there. Some really fun things. And, you know, we also get um, the Bat family. The rest of the Bat family sign they're going to go to Acropolis and help Batman. Uh, they they um, trick um, Cyborg into porting them there. And Cyborg ends up going along um, kind of after the fact. Um, so I think it's gonna be cool. Um, I, I think it's, I think it's a good thing that they have Cyborg there. I think it's gonna lend, to some degree, it's gonna lend plausibility to their survivability in, um, Acropolis, what they do. Um, there's some great stuff in here with the son of, um, with the son of, of Darkseid, uh, which I think is really interesting because it, um, kind of mirrors what, Bruce is doing with Damien. They're both attempting to resurrect, um, you know, dead family members. Um, be curious to see how both sides turn out. Um, there's also another really great part in here where um, all the rest of the Bat family that's going to help, they, they, they're wearing extra armor because they're going to a place they know is going to be, you know, full of combat. And the funny thing is all the extra armor pieces are armor pieces that were made for Robin at one point or another. So the whole crew is kind of dressed up as Robin. And so it's kind of like a a good, um, uh, you know, kind of a, this is why we're doing it kind of moment. You know, because they're really going to help save Rob. Ah, that was really cool. Um, wonderful book. I still really like that book. I think that book's just uh, you know, amazing on all kinds of levels. Extremely solid. Um, great read. Excited to see how it all happens. Um, in my, I'm going to be doing a DC Uncover the Covers, talking about January solicitations, and there's a huge spoiler about this book in the January solicitations. But I'll talk about it there, just because. Let's talk Batwoman, issue number 35. With this awesome group of people that we are all so excited about getting all these characters in this book. Um, and then we get this weird suddenly in outer space thing that I'm sure you probably watched a dozen other people's videos about it. Um, you know, from every gambit of, I was kind of amused by it if I could forget that it was um, Batwoman, um, you know, to downright um, scorn and hatred um, for the book and the people who are doing it. Um, I think the biggest problem here, there's not a lot to this book. It's, it's fairly shallow in content. Um, they're in space, they're fighting Morgan Le Fay, and you don't know why they're fighting her or how the hell they got in space. The weird thing is, is uh, I'm, I meant before I shot this video to look up the Latin term because I've forgotten it uh, for starting in the middle. It's res mille something. Um, can't remember. And um, it's basically a writing term meaning you're starting in the middle of the story and then you work your way back to one end or the other. Okay, that's what they're doing here. That's what the writer's doing here. But what's strange is almost every single, I, I can't think of a comic book that does not have, uh, that has this kind of um, writing feature that they don't tell you when you open the first page and you're clearly someplace where the last book did not lead off, let, lend off at because the last books we read, uh, you know, landed with um, her having potentially vampiric issues uh, with, um, um, Nocturna, suddenly she's in space. Um, normally, the book would say on it, you know, 
three weeks from now, a week from now, 24 hours from now, 10 hours from now, a month from now, a year from now, you know, read this in the April issue of, um, of annual number one or something stupid like that. It has some sort of timeline. This one has none. Nowhere in it does it say, does it say, oh, this is happening in the future. We're going to tell you what happened. The only hint of that you get is the very last page where you get Batwoman going, man, to think how we got here or something along those lines, which I'm assuming now it's going to go back to the beginning of this whole thing. How did we get this cool group of people together? Um, and whatever. Now, this cool group doesn't get used for Tinker's Darn, really, in this issue. So hopefully in those other issues, we get something cool out of them because these are all great characters. Um, some of my favorite characters. Alice, this black Alice that we thought was. Well, this Alice is Alice as in um, uh, Batwoman's um, sister. Um, written com almost 100% completely out of character. Um, Alice, it, up to this point, has always been this kind of weird, fractured, uh, clearly fallen down the rabbit hole um, kind of a, of a character. Um, you know, high priestess of the crime Bible kind of a thing. This just really strange but with it kind of person here you know she's more hey brosif how's it going kind of a thing which just does not work um even even um kate you know batwoman her dialogue seems off even off in comparison to the other issues that andrakio has written um which is just kind of crazy that that's the case you'd think he would be consistent and everybody's really down on andrakio i understand why none of this has been really any good at all um, I will continue to maintain that the guy has written some really good stuff. I absolutely love, um, I keep saying this, I absolutely love his Manhunter, uh, his Kate Spencer Manhunter. That character's brilliant. The secondary characters were brilliant in that. Um, n nothing about this is, is that way, though, un unfortunately. Um, the art in this is okay. I, I, to me, it feels a little schizophrenic because there are three inkers on it, so it's kind of, uh, I, I think at times, a, a mixed bag. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Um, totally off. You know, I really don't mind her being in space. To be quite honest, I don't mind her being in space. If they're going to tell us a story to give us why that is. And, and I think we're going to get that. I mean, I, they're going to go back now and tell us because this is, in the, like I said, starting in the middle of a story. Um, but yeah, um, po poorly executed, poorly executed and, 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 um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to keep getting it for now. I want to know what the rest of this is, how this happens. I'm curious to see how they use these characters. So, um, I'm going to continue it for a while. I keep hoping something different will happen with it, you know. But you know how that is, right? Collectors. Loki, Agent of Asgard. Um, another March to Axis um, uh, issue. Really enjoyed this. I really like this artist that they have. The last two issues uh, on the book. Um, um, I don't know if it's George or Jorge. Right there is the name. I'm not even going to begin to pronounce it. Because I'm tired of killing it. I uh, really like his, his artwork. Um, it's really great. I like the style of it. It's, it's, it is... Um, I, I think done really well. The coloring is really well on it. There's just some great stuff. Uh, so anyway, so basically, um, Lafia, like the rest of the world, is being attacked uh, telepathically uh, by the Red Skull um, in his uber state using um, Xavier's brain. And um, it, this is more of a Doom issue than it is a Loki issue. Um, you know, Doom goes out amongst his people. Uh, starts to have own self-doubt. Once he starts having self-doubt in himself, he realizes that he's under some sort of attack. He protects himself, tries to figure out how to protect the rest of his people because his people are fighting amongst themselves. And it takes Verda, the girl that's in this that, 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 um, can't be, that, that you can't lie to. She always knows the truth. She knows when you're lying. And, um, I don't know, three-year-old um, um, Valerie, is that her name? Richards? Uh, Valera, um, Richards, um, they work it out. Um, great conversation between the two of them. I can read a book with just those two characters in it. They're kind of fun. Um, 
you know, there's some discussion around Loki um, being the end of the world or whether he is or isn't. Um, she does convince the little girl to allow Loki to get out of the trap that he's in because they need the sort of truth. They use the sort of truth um, with some kind of science and magic um, to bust the spell that's on the people of Lathia, which is kind of interesting because it's just basically it's this big giant shockwave of truth, which of course is pretty um, horrific for poor Loki, who is nothing but a storyteller and a liar. Um, you know, he's a good guy in this. He's trying to be a good guy, uh, but still operates under lies and stories. Um, how bad it kind of messes with him to be hit with a shockwave. And they had this great scene at the end of it, basically, where Magneto is showing up because Magneto is gathering an army of morally um, corrupted um, individuals to go and deal with the main event in um, Axis, which I am not getting. But I have to tell you, reading this makes me kind of almost want to go get issue number three of Axis, which isn't out yet. Um, doubt I will, but it does make me interested to read it um, just because of this group of people is being gathered up. And I've got another book that I, that I'm going to talk about next where that is gathered up. Um, great book. Really liking uh, Loki, Age of Asgard. No idea what the sales are in it. It probably get canned too along with um, She-Hulk. I don't know. Anyway, Magneto is the other one. Gathering up all of these, um, all of these villains. Um, this process. Basically, this one it, it's still the street level Magneto. He, you know, he's been pulled into this war the Axis stuff that's going on. Um, he's kind of helping the heroes because some of the things that the, that the bad guys are using are these huge sentinels which were actually created by um, uh, uh, and manipulated by uh, Magneto at one point. Um, he basically folds. He folds and runs um, because all he can see is destruction. Everything he, he uh, touches or attempts to do falls apart around him. And, and it's a, a, a large portion of this is him setting and questioning his legacy. What's the legacy of Magneto going to be? It, you know, is he going to be known as the man who saved you know, mutant kind? He certainly couldn't save his own family. He couldn't save, um, you know, he couldn't save the Jews from um, the camps um, during World War II. He tried creating utopia, which was uh, destroyed, and thousands of people were, were killed there, too. You know, what really is this going to be his legacy? And, and he's just kind of hiding from it all. Um, he gets inspired to go back out and attempt to, to stop this all. Uh, for tie-in type stuff, I really enjoyed it. I, 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 it's still, uh, Colin Bunn here did a great job of, of keeping it to the core of the book and the core of the character, which is great if you can do that um, amongst the, um, you know, the, the stuff that's going on with the event stuff and whatnot. It didn't, I mean, the book, the book has lost focus as far as what kind of where it was going before, but really not because really the focus of the book has been Magneto. What's his legacy? What's his attempts to try and um, write once again the mutant ship that's coming apart? I have no idea what's going to happen though because of course, I, the more I think about it, there's simplifications because of what Marvel seems to be doing with their mutant kind anyway, uh, moving everything away from mutants and making them inhumans due to some potential legal actions, it seems, with Fox and movie right ownings and all that kind of silliness. So I don't know what the long-term outcome for this is in these characters, uh, but I really did um, enjoy it. And hey, I didn't even mind the fact that Deadpool was in the book. How about that, huh? But the, like I said, the book stayed to its core, the core being, you know, being Magneto and, um, you know, him being this somewhat broken man trying to uh, make amends and um, make things right and continue to foster the protection of mutant kind, whatever the cost is. Speaking of Inhumans, Ms. Marvel, issue number nine. And the significant, one of the significant things in this issue is we find out that um, Ms. Marvel is an Inhuman. Um, she gets herself in a tight pinch, uh, gets rescued by the Inhumans, gets introduced to um, Medusa and um, New Ada and all of that. Um, you know, clearly, you know, making her Inhuman, you know. Um, and it's interesting to see how she deals with that. Still a wonderful book. Incredibly charming. The character is just great. Her interaction with Lockjaw. Lockjaw is like the best of the pet type characters that are out there. Lockjaw and Lion Cat, right? Anyway, um, you know, great, great stuff as far as that goes. Um, great dialogue in here. Great personality. Um, 
just a fabulous book. I, I just you can't remember this book enough. Um, it's interesting watching her deal with stuff. She comes up with a plan, um, <clears throat> makes a big strike on the bad guy that's in this, and then has that kind of backfire at the very end um, for her. And I'll be curious to see how she deals with that in the next issue. Um, but yeah, really, really great. Um, wonderful book. I think everybody should be picking it up. Um, Camilla's just an awesome character. <clears throat> and finally for the Monster Comic Reviews, we have issue number 16 of um, Superior Foes of Spider-Man. This is the penultimate issue. One more issue left and it's all done. Uh, this In this issue, uh, we see come to um, a head all of the... Um, all of the superior um, foes, they all, um, the Sinister Six, Sinister Six, all um, have sold each other out, all sold the, the, the um, head um, to uh, different organizations. They all show up at the exact same time to collect and all kinds of craziness breaks loose. Um, it seems that Boomerang's getting his own in here. Uh, both Chameleon and Al catch up to him and look to be going to be beating the pulp out of him. Um, but there's a surprise at the very end of this. And if what they hint at the very end of this is ultimately what ends up being what Boomerang was after all this time, I am going to love this comic book even more. Because uh, despite it being funny, despite it having all these jokes, uh, lots of inside humor, lots of just funny, ridiculous, you know, B, you know, D string uh, villains trying to keep their crap together and just being ridiculous. Um, and all those master plans that he had going of, you know, the different things he has stole along the way, supposedly, you know, this, this, you know, picture of what Doom really looks like without his armor, you know, this fabled head of this mafia boss, which wasn't supposed to exist, and they actually end up finding the real head, it actually does exist, and all of this stuff, if it all comes down to simply what Boomerang wants out of this at the end of the day, it's gonna, that's going to be beautiful. It's going to be absolutely great. Um... And, and I hope he gets to do it. You know, I almost hope he gets away with it. You know, it's one of those kind of things where they're all losers. But wouldn't it be great if the last issue, at least one of them, won something? Um, great. Great stuff. It's been fun. It's been fun. And, and I like the feel of the where it's ending at. What'd you think? Those of you guys who are reading this. What'd you think? Anyway, that's it for this week, Superhero Comics. Um, be back next week with more comics. Have a great one, everybody.